Hi and welcome to another BrettWeiss.com Excel screencast. Today's screencast is going to introduce you to the Excel object model. An object in Excel is just something that we can manipulate. A worksheet, a workbook, a range, an add-in. These are all things that we can manipulate programmatically with VBA code. The Excel object model just specifies a hierarchy in which these objects can be referenced. And this hierarchy makes fairly logical sense. So at the, top of the, at the top of the hierarchy is the application object. The application object just means Excel itself. Within the application object are objects like the workbook object. And we just drill down and down into each, into, into more detail. An, an example of an object within the workbook objects is the worksheet object. And within that object is objects like the range object. And objects within that object are objects like the font object. It actually makes a lot of logical sense once you get used to how you can reference these objects within the hierarchy. So first I want to show you um, a great resource for checking out all the objects in Excel. If we go to the help file in the VBA editor, Alt F11 to get to the VBA editor, and we just type in object model into the search, bo into the search box. and we click on the search result Excel object model reference to the left you'll see every you'll see the reference to every object in Excel and there's over 250 objects I don't know if there's 300 yet there might be 300 but a lot of objects in Excel things like charts spark lines all these things can be classified as objects in Excel. But what you'll find when you're programming, especially starting out programming in VBA, is that you'll only use a handful of the a handful of these objects 80% of the time. And those are the objects that we're going to focus on to start out. So I just wanted to show you the help file where you can get help on any of these objects. If you click on an object, you can get its properties and its methods, which we'll go through in a second. It, all of this is referenced on the help file. It's a great resource. So we'll back out, and to start out, let's just insert a module and start writing code, and I'll, I'll tell you how to reference these objects and how we can manipulate these objects using VBA code. So if we go up to insert, in mo insert a module, our code window will pop up. We've inserted module one in book one. That's the only workbook that I have open. And first, just a couple things about writing macros. The syntax to start a basic macro is sub and then the macro name. Our, our macro name is going to be test. We can press enter. You'll notice that Excel has put the end sub command. That'll end our macro in at the end. And it's put brackets beside our macro name. This is, this is if we want to pass an argument into the macro from somewhere else. This is a bit advanced. We're not going to get into this. Um, we're just going to focus on the basics of writing code. First of all, if we insert any line and proceed it with a single comma, Excel will ignore this line of code when we're running the macro. And you can tell a line will be ignored if we press enter, it will turn green. So let's say we want a macro to change the cell A5 in worksheet 1 of the workbook named book 1. How do we go about doing that? The first way is to progress through the hierarchy of the Excel object model until we arrive at the range object and then set the value property of cell A5 equal to 5. So we're going to do that first and when you're writing VBA code it's good to think about it as it's kind of backwards to the way you would speak it in plain English. So we'll start writing our simple macro to change the cell value to 5 in the cell A5. So we start at the top. So application this is Excel itself. All other objects can be traced back to the application object. So within the application objects is the workbooks object. And you'll notice when I started to write this code, Excel provides a dropdown of all the properties and methods associated with the application object. And this is very useful. You can cruise through and see all the different properties and methods. A method will have this little green symbol like this. A property will have this symbol, such as the active cell symbol. Next, we need to specify which workbook we want to reference. We can reference workbooks using what's called a collection. A collection is simply a number of related objects in Excel. So to reference a single object in a, in a collection, the syntax is open brackets, 
and then enclose the workbook name in parentheses. So book one, and then we're going to do the same thing with the worksheets collection. We're going to reference sheet one, and then underneath, if you remember the Excel object model example that I gave you, the range object is what's called a child of the worksheets object, which is a child of the workbooks object, which is a child of the application object. So range, we're going to reference the cell that we want to change. And now we're going to change what's called a property of the cell. And the property of the cell we want to change is called the value. A property is an attribute of an object or an aspect of its behavior. So some properties of the range object would be its value, or its font, or its style, or its interior, or its borders. So what we want to change is the cell's value. So the way to do that is dot value equals whatever we want it to equal, in this case 5. To test a sub one line at a time, we press the F8 key. So if we go back up to subtest and we start pressing the F8 key, we'll notice that Excel highlights the line of code that it's about to execute. So we're going to press F8. Whoops, I must not have spelled something wrong. I got an error already. Um, this is the error box. When you have an error, it'll, it'll show you what type of error you've made. Usually doesn't mean a whole lot if you're just starting out. You can click the help button to get more information. We're going to click debug. I must have spelled something wrong. Oh, there it is. I spelled workbooks wrong. That won't work. So okay, workbooks, spelled right. We'll try this again. Hit F8, execute the line of code, end our sub. We'll go back, hit Alt 11. Go to sheet 1 and you'll notice in cell A5 there's now a value of 5. Back to the Visual Basic Editor and this macro is an example of explicit reference. We explicitly referenced each object all the way down the hierarchy until we got to the object whose value we wanted to change. It's not always necessary to explicitly reference each object in the object hierarchy. So as an example subtest 2. This time we're going to implicitly reference cell A5 of worksheet 1 of work of book 1 of the Excel application. When we implicitly reference an object, Excel determines the object hierarchy based on where we currently are. So I'll just give you an example. This time we're just going to we're just going to simply reference cell A5. And now we're going to perform a method of the range object. So we're going to perform the copy method. And now you'll see when I press spacebar, this is the argument of the copy method. So what we need to do is we put, need to put the destination where we want to copy what's in cell A5. So we can do this two ways. We can either explicitly declare the argument using writing out destination. And then to set the arguments of a method, we need to use the syntax semicolon equals and now we're going to put our destination that we want cell A5 to copy to. So we're just going to put cell A6, one row below. The other way we could have done it is implicitly and just put cell, just implicitly declare the range we wanted to copy to. Both are the same. I recommend always explicitly writing out the arguments to a method. Now back to the original point. You'll notice that in this subroutine we don't have we haven't explicit, explicitly declared which workbook or which worksheet we'd like this value to copy from so what Excel is going to do is it's going to use our current position in the worksheet to decide where it is that we want to copy cell A5 to cell A6 and since currently we're in sheet 1 of book 1 that's what object it's going to use so if we go back alt F11 and now we'll run this code Go back to the worksheet and you'll notice that now our macro has copied the cell contents of A5 to A6. However, if we go over to sheet 2 and now I put something like 40 in cell A5, I come back to the Visual Basic Editor, run my code, now you'll notice that the macro has returned the range A5 in worksheet 2 of book 1. This is why we have to be careful about explicitly or implicitly declaring the hierarchy of the object model. If you don't explicitly declare where you want to make the change, Excel will assume you mean your currently selected worksheet and workbook. 
This is running a little bit long, so we'll pick it up in the next screencast. I want to thank you for watching the screencast on BrettWeese.com. Have a great day.